This lesson covers the following topics. Domain properties, including assigning user and message size limits, configuring user verification sources, assigning a mail server to a domain, and adding a domain administrator, adding users manually and assigning aliases to a user, configuring account settings, including quarantine and archive settings, adding an administrator, and configuring user options, such as allowing users to modify their own passwords or view their own quarantine folders, as well as various other settings. We've talked about how to synchronize accounts with Security Gateway by querying a user verification source. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to manage domains and users that have already been added to Security Gateway. So for this lesson, we're going to start out under the Domains and Users menu, located right up here under the Accounts section from within the Setup Users menu. So we'll click on Domains and Users, and this displays the list of all of the domains that you have in Security Gateway, along with the number of users assigned to each domain. And then across the top, you have a series of buttons. You can create a new domain, you can edit a domain, you can delete a domain, you can view the users for a selected domain, you can view all of the messaging traffic to and from that domain, you can view the quarantine for that domain, as well as any whitelisted or blacklisted addresses under that domain. And you can also import or export uh, domains to or from a, a CSV file. If there are any other buttons that are not visible due to, say, for example, the size of the window that you have, you can use this little drop-down arrow here to display any additional options that might be available. And then down here is one of our domains. And then in this particular case, there are five users assigned to this domain. So before I go in and I show the uh, characteristics and the features of an existing domain, I'll go in and uh, we'll go ahead and create a new domain. So we'll click on new. And then let's call this domain example.biz. You've got some options you can configure for this domain. For example, you can limit the number of users assigned to this domain. Simply put in a number in the box here. So for example, if I want to limit this to 50 users, you can place a limit on the size of messaging traffic to and from this domain by using this option here. You can associate this domain with a specific IP address using the options down here. So if you have more than one IP address on the Security Gateway server and you'd like to assign specific domains to specific IP addresses, you can use the binding feature here. You'd simply put in the IP address here and then here, the HELO string, this is basically the string that one mail server sends to another during the SMTP protocol communications when they have their back and forth communication to identify uh, themselves to the other server. So normally that would be something like uh, your host name. Uh, that's the, the typical standard HELO type string. You can also designate an SMTP authentication password if you'd like to add some credentials here that the Security Gateway can then pass to the mail server or the users can pass to Security Gateway to authenticate. And if you have any other domain aliases that you'd like to add, you can place those aliases here, clicking Add after each one. So if we scroll back to the top. We can view the other options for this domain. If we click on the Verification tab, we can assign a user verification source. Remember, we created one of these in a previous lesson. So we can assign a user verification source to this domain. So for example, if you have an Active Directory server that you'd like to use, or another, or an mdaemon server using Minger or an LDAP source residing on another server, you can use this option here to assign that user verification source to this particular domain. You would simply click on the arrow down here to move it from the Available Sources column to the Selected Sources column. You also have the option of checking this box to not query a user verification source, in which case you would simply manage your users manually. And then if we move on to the mail servers tab, these are the mail servers that will be used by this domain. So you would simply pick the mail server that this domain is using and then select the arrow here to move it from the available servers column to the selected servers column. Now, if you don't assign a mail server to a domain, so let's say we remove this from the selected servers column, then the default mail server will be used. 
So whenever you're setting up a mail server in Security Gateway that you're protecting, you do have an option of a, of a checkbox that allows you to designate that particular mail server as a default mail server to be used when mail is to or from a local domain that has not been assigned its own mail server. And then finally, under the Admins tab, you can assign administrators to this particular domain. You can create a, a new one by clicking the, uh, the New button. Let's go ahead and save our new domain first. Okay, and then we'll go back in and we'll we'll finish that up. We'll assign it an administrator. So we'll go back to the Administrators tab and then we'll click on New. We can, we can designate a local user or an external user to be the administrator for this domain. It doesn't matter whether or not they have an email address on the Security Gateway server that can be local or external. So if we assign a local user to be the administrator for this domain, we can simply enter in the uh, information in the blanks provided and then click Save and Close. Now, right now, it doesn't look like it's done anything. So if we close this window out, uh, what we can do, because what we want is we want to be able to see the avail available administrators that we can choose from. So if we close out and then we uh, go back in to our domain and then go back to the Admins tab, the user that we just assigned, the administrator that we just added, is now there. If we were adding an existing account, uh, let's say for example you've already synchronized accounts with this new domain, so accounts have already been imported, then you will see those accounts over here on the left hand side under available administrators, at which point you would then be able to select the account that you'd like to assign administrative rights to, and then select the arrow to move it over to the selected admi administrators column. So now we've got our new domain, and now we can add some users manually to this domain. Of course, if you've got a user verification source assigned to this domain, then those users would be added automatically. But to manually add users, we can click on the Users tab for the designated domain right here, and then we can click on New to create a new user. Let's say, for example, we'll just use User02. And then you can populate any other requested information, such as the uh, real name that will be used, a password, which is optional and is only needed if the account cannot be verified against whatever user verification source you are using. So if it can't be verified against mdaemon using Minger or Active Directory or an LDAP source, then you can specify that password here. You can also designate this user as an administrator, giving them either global or domain administrator rights. If you grant them domain administrator rights, simply select which domains you would like to give them administrative access to. So for example, this account already has domain administrator rights to the example.biz domain, but we can also grant them rights to access from an administrator standpoint, the example.com domain. We'd simply click on the button here to move it over to the selected domains column. And then we click on save and close. So now we have our, our second user for this domain. And if we double click on that user, we have some additional options. Across the top, we have the aliases tab. And this is useful if, for example, Security Gateway receives an email to or from the local domain for an account that was not previously recognized. It queried the user verification source and created a new account. But it turns out that that new account should have actually been an alias for a particular user. When that happens, if a new account gets created that should have been an alias assigned to a user, you can pull up the account for the user that the alias should belong to and click on the aliases tab here and then select which account you would like to merge with the selected user. What will happen when you merge it is it will become an alias under the selected user. So, for example, user12.example.com. Let's say user12 is not really an actual user, but the account was created anyway. Simply select that account and click on Merge User, and the alias will then be created here. You can also create your own aliases if you'd like uh, by simply adding them in the blank provided and then clicking Add after each one. And then you can click on Save and Close. Other options you have across the top to manage your users you can click on edit, which basically does the same thing as double clicking on an account. You can delete an account. You can view settings for the selected account. For example, if I click on it, these are the settings assigned for this particular user. So you can change the user's password. You can configure quarantine settings for this account. 
you can either select whether the default quarantine settings for the uh, domain that the account is assigned to will be used, or if you'd like to specify specific quarantine settings for this particular account, and then configure whether quarantine messages are held on the server and how often a quarantine summary email is sent and things like that. So various options you can configure for your account, your account settings, your account defaults. You have some additional options at the bottom, such as whether or not you want to archive messages for the uh, selected account or automatically whitelist addresses that uh, the account sends mail, mail to, or other exceptions such as not performing anti-spam tests for messages addressed to this account or exempting the account from the account hijack detection feature, which might be necessary if you have an account that sends a lot of legitimate mail in short periods of time. And then just some other general preferences, such as whether or not to display the uh, statistics graph when logging into uh, Security Gateway, and then your preferred language here, and then how many items to uh, display per page. Th so those are your general uh, account settings for your accounts. I'm just going to back out of that and not make any changes there. But you can also view messages to or from the uh, selected account by clicking the Messages button. And then any quarantine messages will show up under the quarantine button and uh, any whitelist or blacklist entries under the whitelist blacklist buttons. And you can also import or uh, export accounts using the import and export buttons. Now, if you wanted to import accounts, you would uh, do so by uh, importing a CSV file. So you would simply browse to it and import it. So we've covered domains and users. Now let's talk about administrators. So if we click on administrators here, this is where you can add any new administrators that, that you'd like to add to Security Gateway. You would simply click on the new button here and then specify whether the new administrator is a local or external user and then fill in the blanks provided here. If the new administrator is going to be assigned administrative rights for just one specific domain, you would go down here to the bottom and select the domain administrator option, choose which domain you wish to assign administrative rights to for the selected account, select the arrow to move that selected option over to the selected domains column, and then click on save and close. And then finally, you can configure various user options. So if we click on user options right here, for example, under the accounts section, you have some default levels of access and features that you can grant your users. And notice at the top right hand corner, and this applies to a lot of other settings in Security Gateway, you can apply the changes that you make globally or on a per domain basis by selecting the designated domain in the top right hand corner in the drop down menu. So for example, you can choose whether or not to allow users to modify their own passwords or display the lost password link on the login screen, or to view and manage their own quarantine folders, or modify their own quarantine settings, or to view logs of messages to or from their account, or whether you'd like to allow them to search and view their archived messages. So you've got all of these options here of different permissions that you can grant your users. You also have an option of sending a welcome message to new users or sending an alert to the global administrators when a new user is created. You can even optionally require a user to accept a terms of use before they can log in. So you would type that information here, check that box and enter that information here. You can also assign default settings such as whether or not anti-spam tests are performed for uh, new accounts and these other options that we discussed previously. If you have selected a specific domain in the top right hand corner and made changes, then that will show up here under the exceptions. If you happen to be on the global option here, then any domain specific settings will be visible down here under the exceptions section. So for example, with these options enabled or disabled, this will change what information is available to an end user when they log into Security Gateway. And let me pull up an example here. So this is an end user who does not have administrative rights so depending on what options you select here, the end user will see whatever you grant them permissions to here. So for example, view my own quarantine, view my message log, or search my message archive. These are the items that you will be granting the user access to by enabling or disabling those options under the user options screen right here.